let me ease your concerns by bringing you the information you need to make start investments in an era of high inflation. For today's video, we will be going to talk about how to make more millions from inflation for beginners. Let's get started. Effects of High Inflation For those of you who have been around long enough, dating back to the late 1970s and early 1980s, you can attest that inflation can be a portfolio killer because it erodes purchasing power and this hit heavy. But for those of you who have not been paying enough attention in class, let's recap what causes and then happens in inflation periods. Prices for goods and services are always subject to change in a market economy. Some prices increase while others decease. If prices of products and services generally increase rather than simply for specific items, inflation has taken place. It means that compared to yesterday, you may get less for a dollar today. A textbook definition of inflation is the gradual loss of a specific currency's purchasing power. As this definition demonstrates, it is bad for any economy to experience high inflation on a continuous basis since it reduces the purchasing power of money. The Federal Reserve uses interest rates as a tool to fight inflation in order to deal with this. Raising interest rates slows down a nation's economy, which lowers inflation as prices fall. Interest rates are projected to eventually rise in an inflationary climate, which will hurt fixed income assets. Inflation is one of the risk variables that affect economic cycles at the macro level of both domestic and international markets. It can destabilize economies and governments as well as wealth. Now that you know how negatively high inflation might impact your portfolio, let's look at some strategies for investing that can give you the upper hand. Investing during high inflation People tend to overreact. They attempt to predict the stock market first. What a waste of time it is. Nobody is able to forecast the stock market. They try to predict interest rates. I mean, if somebody were to correctly anticipate interest rates three times in a row, they would become quite wealthy. Concerning the fact that there aren't many millionaires on the earth, I took logic classes at Boston College and learned about syllogism. There would be so many billionaires, there can't be many people who can influence interest rates, and nobody is able to forecast the economy. A large portion of the audience was present in 1981 and 1982 when the prime rate was 20%, inflation was double digit, and unemployment was double digits. In 1981, I don't recall anyone telling me about it. I didn't read Iceland, but I often think of it when we experience the worst recession since the Great Depression. What I'm trying to say is that it would be quite helpful to know what the stock markets will do. It would be fantastic to know that the DAO Jones average for the current year would be X, that we will experience a full-scale recession, and that our interest rates will be 12%. You never know when anything will come in handy, but simply don't get to learn. I believe what I've always said. If you spend 14 minutes a year studying economics, you've spent 12 minutes. Now I have to act fairly. I'm referring to economics in general and forecasting the upturn or decline for the upcoming year, or M1 and M23B, and all these Ms. When you mention scrap pricing, I'm talking about economics. When I buy auto stocks, I want to use automobile pricing to determine what is happening. The rise in car prices is a fairly reliable predictor. And I want to see hotel occupancies when I buy hotel equities. I am aware that chemical stocks are unaware of the current ethylene price. Such are the facts. It matters if aluminum inventory falls for 5 months in a row. I'm okay with the affordability of homes. I'm interested in learning more about my own Fannie Mae or home stock.
you may get economic facts and predictions there. And economic predictions are a complete waste of time. Alan Greenspan would be extremely honest and admit that he is unable to predict interest rates. He can forecast what short rates would do over the coming six months, try to get them to base their decisions on the long-term rate in three years. How to invest during periods of high inflation The godfather of Wall Street, Peter Lynch, has probably put it better than I ever did, trying to predict the future behavior of the market and interest rates and making investments based on such information can soon become a fool's errand. Instead, there are investing strategies you may use to benefit your portfolio in a variety of economic environments, including those with heightened volatility and sudden swings in price. Investing the same way you always have, albeit with a little more caution, as I will soon demonstrate, is the best course of action during moments of rising inflation. Let's dive right into the keys. Review your investments. This first key is particularly crucial if you're considering retiring soon or looking to take some of all your money out of the market shortly. Generally, clients should have a portfolio that can withstand some inflation, says Seth Milliken, a CFP and founder of North Carolina-based Lattice Financial. If that's the case, you might not need to make many changes. However, investors with portfolios that are primarily fixed income investments for security may want to reassess. To guarantee that returns are outperforming inflation, this may most likely include making minor adjustments to the overall asset allocation. Because remember, the words of Buffett before, you don't want to be on the other end of the misery index. Let me tell you, it's miserable. Key number two, do not interact and don't ditch your stocks on impulse. This next piece of advice is for those who are afraid, lighthearted, or who worked with paper, and some who are simply unable to remain motionless. Please pay attention. Do not overreact. High inflation is only one of the many market turbulences. The world is not going to end tomorrow. Despite what you might have seen on television, do not assume that high inflation will stay forever just because it is an uncomfortable level. Since it won't, in in all honesty, Jerome Powell must make sure of that. And despite the possibility of rising interest rates, whatever volatility the market may experience will be transient relative to the overall market. Minor portfolio adjustments may be necessary, but making drastic changes is most likely a bad idea. Don't let fear cause you to give up your sensible plan as you begin to panic sell. However, if your entire investing plan was terrible, that might be a different problem. Historically speaking, owning a healthy dose of strong stocks has afforded perhaps the best protection against inflation, says Greg Giardino, a CFP be with J.M. Franklin and company in New York. The reason a well-thought-out portfolio is a wise idea, especially in high inflationary times, is that companies are best positioned to adjust to inflation. Investing in company stocks makes sense, then because most of the time, they can pass along the cost increases to consumers and keep their profit margins intact and their share prices up. Therefore, employing stock mutual funds to diversify your business investment portfolio is ultimately a terrific way to protect against inflation. All you have to do is put your money into reputable businesses like Coca-Cola and Apple, businesses that can afford price increases without suffering market share losses. The amusing part is that Berkshire Hathaway owns both of these businesses. A portfolio with a reputation for being particularly careful when it comes to investment in solid businesses, it is obvious that you can't go by heeding the advice of the Ohama Oracle. Forecasters do expect inflation to decline through 2022 as a supply chain issues subsides, labor markets return to normal, and convert emergency financial infusions decrease. Most people agree that the trend is downward. How much lower will it go and how long till it gets there? Are 
other questions. By the end of the year, according to Fidelity's Malwell, it may be closer to the 3 to 4 percent. However, as Peter Lynch says, a good portfolio will earn you money, whether indeed the forecast prove themselves true or things go another way. Key number three, carefully weigh bond investments. There is another point aimed at people who don't want to see too much red in the market, similar to our previous point. It is also aimed at people who are getting close to retirement and don't want to lose money on their investments at such a crucial time. Bonds balance and diversify a portfolio, but often offer lower returns. Most investors consider them a safe bet, especially those closer to retirement who don't want to jeopardize their savings when they're close to the finish line. For people who are particularly concerned about inflation and who are nearing or already in retirement, Giordano says Treasury Inflation Protected Securities, otherwise known as TIPS, can be a prudent investment for short-term or intermediate-term money. These bonds are designed to gain in value as inflation rises due to the bond's principal value. However, it's important to keep in mind that tips can cost more than the typical bond because they do provide some inflation protection. Therefore, it's important to thoroughly assess if this type of investment matches your circumstances and financial objectives. However, it's something to keep in mind as we talk about investments to make in such a setting. Key number four, as true cash and hold assets. Cash is the asset class that is most susceptible during times of rising inflation. Your cash investments will gradually lose value during inflationary times, possibly significantly so, particularly in current times. Investors have a tendency to hold on to far more cash than they should, which is a horrible thing. Imagine that your $100 only be worth $93 at the end of the year due to a 7% year inflation rate. This is a significant decline. Whether you are retired or not, Yulin argues that investing in properly diversified portfolios is crucial since rising prices reduce the value of cash assets. To take our previous example even further, as an example, he calculates that the cost of holding $250,000 in cash would amount to a $17,500 loss in purchasing power a year considering a 7% inflation rate. However, it is also crucial for investors to remain their diversification and keep assets that can adjust to changing inflationary circumstances. Stocks, commodities, and real estates are some of these asset classes. Which asset of this subject have you found to be very useful? Please let me know by leaving a comment below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, turn on the notification bell, and subscribe to Wealthology for more videos like this. Thank you for stopping by to watch. See you in our next video.